So back in the early 80s and 90s, admittedly before my time, I was born in 94, PC towers were already prevalent in corporate offices, uh, you know, the cubicle stuffed kind. They were used for number crunching and charting and the like, but as prevalent as they were, they were fairly uniform in design. Beige, or you may have heard it referred to as putty. Uh, it was the in color, but why? I mean, retrospectively, the, these PCs weren't really that pretty. I mean, why, why not white? Why not black? Uh, why not silver? Something different, something that's not an off tan. Well, on the point of uniformity, employers wanted all workers on the same machines. A mundane computer that everyone around you had wouldn't distract you from the work at hand. In fact, uh, the computer was simply, it was a means to an end, right? And, and it worked rather brilliantly. Human resource departments didn't want jealousy in the workplace and employees with varying computer tower colors might be inclined to stir up trouble. I, I know that probably sounds super silly to most of us in 2020, but HR took these measures very seriously. The corporate climate back then was totally different than it is now. An entire cubicle had varying shades of gray, white, and beige mixed in, nothing flamboyant and nothing intimidating. Speaking of which, colors have been known to evoke certain emotions from humans. For instance, did you know that the color yellow can trigger anxiety in certain people? It's an attention grabber. It's why we use it for caution signs and warning signs. It's one of the reasons taxis were painted yellow so you'd easily see them. Red has historically signified blood or royalty and that's probably why you don't see red PCs. Uh, but a red painted room, for example, might make you feel aggressive or maybe Powerful, who knows? I definitely don't want you feeling powerful in the workplace. Same goes for a red PC though, right? Or a red chair in an otherwise neutral colored office space. Such things were banned from office spaces in general for these very reasons, as crazy as they might sound on the surface. Like I said, it's psychological. A popular PC color today that was almost always forbidden in office style cubicles back then was black. Now this isn't to say there weren't black towers. There were a few of them, but they weren't prevalent in office environments particularly. And and that was one of the PC manufacturers' largest clientele. They were buying 10, 20, 30 beige towers at a time. But, but funny story about the black PC thing, right? Matthew on Cora points out that this mindset actually still exists today when it comes to men in suits. You wouldn't wear a black suit to work. And I'm talking like straight black. You'd wear blue, maybe brown, or even like a dark gray charcoal, but never black, and it's because the color can make people feel uncomfortable or intimidated, especially in a workplace environment. Now, if you're going to a, a, a fancy dinner or a fancy dance where having a black tuxedo is necessary, the black makes sense. You want to stand out. You're the person who's going to be receiving all of the attention. But the color in other settings can make people feel uncomfortable or intimidated. It's a power play, which is why it was often banned in office culture. Now, at this point, you might be asking, uh, well, okay, all right, the, the, the color black makes sense, uh, but what about white? That's really a color. It's white is kind of a combination of all colors, or maybe with respect to paint, it's the opposite of pigmentation, so there's no color involved in that. But anyway, white. How about white computers, right? Those were popular back in the 80s and 90s, right? Uh, well, white is a, it's a neutral color, right? And it doesn't intimidate people. Uh, but the problem with white is that it doesn't always stay white. White PCs show their age much faster than black ones because they tend to discolor over time, especially if they're exposed repeatedly to questionable fumes from cigarette smoke, again, much more common pre-2000. And since black wasn't allowed, beige became the ideal color. Since it was already kind of an off-white, it didn't need to be cleaned as frequently, and it also didn't discolor as noticeably as white. And uh, if a new employee received a newer tower than you, and you were both working next to each other, right, you would feel pretty upset if his PC looked newer, right? If his was a truer white than yours, uh, which is why beige works, because beige, after years of use, still looks beige. Maybe a slightly darker tone of beige, but you get the point. But they didn't want that kind of unfair culture in the workplace. They wanted people to just focus on themselves and their own cubicles. Hence, why all PCs, for the most part in office environments, were beige. That was the point. It, it was supposed to keep things fair and level in office culture. And this is actually why home appliances at the time were also being offered in beige or off-white. Not because they made people feel intimidating, but because beige or off-white was easier to keep clean, or at least keep looking clean. So I hope you at least learned a thing or two about color choice in the 80s and 90s. Why the heck 
do so many PCs from back then look this way? I had a lot of fun researching this one and uh, now it kind of all makes sense. Heck, I even had a beige PC back in the day. Uh, it was an old compact with a Pentium 2 in it. We had that thing for a long time. Actually, I think we had it before I was even born, but my dad being my dad, he kept it for way past its prime. Uh, but I never questioned its color choice until recently when I started asking why color preferences have changed over the years. Office culture has relaxed significantly in first world countries especially, and people are more concerned with individuality now than perhaps they've ever been before, which is why PC building can uh, be so fun. You get to build something unique to you. White, black, silver, red, heck, pink. You may not get to bring a pink PC to your office job, uh, but the, the proliferation of the personal computer has allowed manufacturers to kind of venture outside the norm, the corporate status quo, if you will. That's all for this one. If you guys like the video, leave a thumbs up, consider clicking that subscribe button, and I will catch you in the next one. My name's Greg. Thanks for learning with me.